Are we live? Okay, uh, then maybe we can start showing the slides. Can you all hear me? Yeah, even people in the back. All right. Um, so the title of this talk is Better Than React, Why We Built Our Own UI Library. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to open the collaborative text document for which the link is on screen. So pad.odu.com slash p slash better than react with dashes. Um, and I made sure, hopefully, to have enough time at the end to answer some questions. So that should be good. Um, my name is Sam. I've been working at Odoo since 2019, and I've been a part of the JavaScript framework team since 2020. Since 2021, I've been one of the core contributors and maintainer of OWL, which is our UI library that we built instead of using React. So maybe first a quick introduction. What is OWL? Um, OWL is a component-oriented UI library. Much like React, it's declarative, meaning that you describe what you want the UI to look like at any given point, and the library is responsible for synchronizing the state of your application with uh, the state of the UI. Um, it is class-based. Uh, unlike React, which at the moment is mostly oriented toward function components, historically they used class component, but mostly the ecosystem has moved away from this. Um, we use classes for all uh, OWL components. And there are very good reasons for that, which I will get into uh, in the rest of this talk. And we use XML templates. So in React, when you want to describe your UI, you would use JSX, which is a syntax extension over JavaScript. Um, and again, we have also good reasons to use XML instead. And I will get into those reasons uh, in the rest of this talk. So this is uh, an example of a simple React component. Uh, we have a counter component. Um, it looks very similar to a class component in React, if, if you've ever seen that. At the, the moment, it's not, any, not really popular any longer. But it, like most React components used to look something like this, except instead of a constructor method, we have a setup method for technical reasons, which I won't get into, into the, uh, inside of this talk. And then instead of a render method that returns JSX, we have this static template property, which is an XML template um, that describes the content of your component. So as I was saying, the title of this talk is Better Than React. And by reading the title of this talk, you might think that I don't like React, but that's actually completely false. I love React. Uh, I think there are many great reasons to love React and to want to use React. React is great. Um, and there are many reasons for that, the first one of which is hiring. It's really easy to hire people to work on React applications, because most people who have done any sort of front-end work in the last 10 years, they've probably used React, even if, if they haven't. Uh, they probably at least know how to read React components. And even if they haven't, which is kind of a tall order at this point, uh, onboarding people to start using React is really easy because there's a great community around it. There's lots and lots of really good resources uh, to learn React. Um, another great reason to like React and to use React is the mental model. Uh, it's really easy to reason about the state of your application and the state of the UI, because basically they're always in sync. And this is something that we've really strived to replicate in OWL. So this is something that we want to keep. Um, and the last thing that's great about React is the ecosystem. It's really, really big. It's huge. Um, there are tons and tons of third-party packages for everything from uh, like just state management to meta frameworks like Next.js that lets you do basically everything that you want uh, just inside the React ecosystem. And then also, obviously, tons of uh, component libraries to build your UI really, really quickly and get off the ground running. So in that case, why are we reinventing the wheel if React is so great? So this is a modern tire, just rubber, inflated rubber, probably something that looks quite like what you have on your car, um, and it's pretty great. 
Uh, and for the purpose of this comparison, this is a React shape wheel. Um, and now I'm kind of jumping to a different subject. What about driving on Mars? So this is Mars. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of lost in the middle of space. And the thing about being lost in the middle of space is that it's really, really cold. Um, the temperature on the surface of Mars can range from around 20 Celsius to negative 150. And when you're driving on the surface of Mars and your temperature is negative 150, uh, well, your tire that started looking like this ends up looking something like this. So that's not great. Um, let's start with a simple example that kind of corresponds to, to this issue that you would have running with uh, rubber tires on the surface of, of Mars. So Odoo is an ERP. We have a bunch of business modules. Uh, one of those is a sales module that lets you place orders. Um, and so here I've built a really tiny example of what a, a button that lets you order anything uh, might look like. So we just have this React component, so it's a function. Um, and when you click on the button, uh, we create an order. So that's great. The thing is, in Odoo, we also have another module that needs to integrate tightly with this, which is inventory management. And in this inventory management, module, we want to change what happens on click. And it's very important in Odoo that we don't want to rewrite all of the logic that was already written in the sales module. We want to reuse it. But we want to somehow interact with it to change the behavior of the existing button. And so you can imagine if we have the inventory module, we want to, whenever a user clicks on the button, we want to check if the product is in stock before we allow them to place an order, right? So if the product is in stock, uh, we let them proceed normally, but if it's not, we show warning and then we do nothing. We don't proceed further. And this is one of the, the core principles of Odoo is the modularity. We need um, modules to integrate efficiently with, it, with each other, but at the same time, we don't want to have everything be a huge monolith where every customer has to um, pay the price of having inventory management, even though for a lot of them, they don't need it. So we only want to pay the price when uh, the customer actually has the, the business need that, that goes with it. And so the way that you might do this in React is, um, well, you can't really do this with a function component. In Odoo, we have a system that allows us to do this sort of thing, which we call the patch system. Um, and the idea is we're going to modify objects or classes in place and change how they behave. And the way the patch system works is, as I was saying, it works with objects and, and classes, but with function components, there's really no way to get at the existing lo logic. We can't really change anything. So it doesn't help with function components. And this is kind of the equivalent of your tire being completely deflated because it's negative 150 degrees outside. So there's still a way that we, we can achieve what we want. And the idea is we are going to use uh, a class component. And so I've converted, at the top uh, right of this slide, I've converted my order button into a, a React class component. So this is not yet an OWL component. And so you can see it, it looks very similar to the, the component I showed in the first slide, except I've extracted the onClick method. Instead of being just an inline function, it's now a method. And now I have a, a render method that returns the JSX that represents the component. And so what we can do inside of Odoo is, in the inventory module, we are going to go and patch the prototype of this order button to override the onClick method so that it can perform this check. It, you can see that now it checks if the, the stock quantity is 0. If it is, it shows a warning and it does nothing. And otherwise, it just calls the original method, which is what we wanted. And so we're still using a rubber tire. We're still using React. But we're kind of not using React in the way that most people would use it. And this is going to be a problem if we were to do that inside of Odoo because people will, will be encouraged by everything in the ecosystem to write function components, and then partners and customers won't, won't be able to extend them at all. So that doesn't really work for us. The other problem is that the surface of Mars looks something like this. And if you try to drive over this kind of surface with a rubber tire, um, well, your rubber tire is not going to live very long. So. Here with the, the inventory example, um, I said, well, let's check the stock quantity on click. And then if the product is not in stock, um, let's just show a warning. Um, but it doesn't really make sense in, from a UX perspective to let the user click on a button and show the button as active if 
whatever they're going to do is going to do nothing anyway. So what we'd like to do instead is disable the button. And there is a way that we can do that in React, and this is to override the render method. Um, and then what we can do is clone the, the JSX that was originally rendered by the, the component, but alter its props. And the way to do that in React is you have to clone, because JSX is frozen. It's completely immutable. You can't change the props of JSX that were already rendered. So this is kind of a, a problem. And if you read the React docs on this specific feature, uh, like JSX dot or React.clone element, they don't have just one, but two different warnings to tell you you're doing something really dumb. And so this is kind of the equivalent of these rocks that you see on the surface of Mars. We don't want to do this. Uh, and the thing is, we already have a, a very a good solution to this kind of problem in Odoo um, that we've used in the back end for years, which is template inheritance. And template inheritance is a way that we have to um, declaratively modify existing templates um, by describing what we want to do to them, all of that in XML. And so the idea is we're going to, so at the top we have the, the templates of the order button component from uh, the sales module that I've extracted to a different file. And at the bottom, we have this XPath that's going to modify whatever is rendered by the original template. And so the, the basic idea is we are going to find elements within the original templates. And through some specific XML syntax, we're going to, to tell the system where we want to modify this some way or another. And in this case, we want to uh, change an attribute. So in this case, we're looking for slash slash button in the original document. So that means we want to find all buttons at the top level of the original document. And then what's inside of this node is going to describe what we do. And in this case, the position is attributes because we want to modify the disabled attributes of the original button. And here we want to add it. Uh, we, we want to give it a, a condition, which is uh, stock quantity disable, uh, is 0. And so when the stock quantity is 0, the button will be completely disabled and will not be clickable. What's nice about this, as compared to overriding the render method, is that um, this can be, uh, like the element that we're trying to modify can be as deep as you want within the template, the original template, whereas with React, it might not have been obvious from the example that, that I, I gave earlier. Um, it was just at the top level, and so we just had to have one React.clone element. But if you want to modify the attribute of some node that's deep within the template, you have to clone every intermediate level uh, before you can even try to attempt to change an attribute. And so that is, uh, that's not very expressive. And the other problem is doing this in the render method means that it's done at runtime on every render. So you're paying the cost of modifying this template many, many times over every time the component is rendered. Whereas with this system, we do it once as a pre-processing step. And then once it done, it's done, every render is efficient, and it uses the compiled template that has the knowledge of all of the modules that have been installed. So I, I think I had a, a few too many extra slides there. Um, and so we've changed the material. We, were, we started with a rubber wheel, but now instead of using uh, JSX as our way to express uh, our templates, we've switched to a completely different material, which is XML, or in this case, metal. And there's still a problem with this, which is that if you're trying to drive on this kind of ground, even with metal tires, after two or three years, your tires that started out looking like this, they end up looking something like this. This is a, a real picture of the, the tires of the, the Curiosity rover after, I think, three years in mission. And this is a problem because the Curiosity rover, it's stranded in space. You can't really go and change its tire every year. Like It's not like your car where after two or three years, you change your tires. We can't do that. And I'm going to get into the equivalent problem in our problem space. So this is a form view. Um, and in Odoo, um, we want to have interfaces that represent all the different business objects that people might want to represent. And we want them to be easy to write. And also, we want them to be consistent between one model and the next. We want the look and feel of Odoo to be consistent across the application. And so for that, we have um, a system that we have had forever, which is called View Architecture. And View Architecture is a dialect that we've built on top of XML, where we have this very, very simple 
sets of tags and attributes that you can use to describe what your UI should look like. Um, and we will handle all of the rendering in the background. And the idea is that it's declarative, but earlier I also said that OWL is declarative, but it's still much, much simpler than actual component. Uh, and the idea is that it should be able to be read and written by people who are not developers. Like, obviously, people need to have some technical inclination, but this doesn't require people to know how to write JavaScript or read JavaScript to read, write, and modify or understand. And as I was saying, the visuals are handled completely automatically so that they can be consistent uh, across different screen and across applications. So here on the right, you can see that we have this field. The name is customer ID. And the prefix ID might cue you in to the fact that this is actually a relational field. It points to another record. But when you look at how it's rendered in the view, it's not just a number. We've actually displayed the name of the customer instead. And Again, this is all of the sort of stuff that we want to handle automatically for, for our end users. Um, this one is the field amount. Um, it's formatted, as you can see, with some decimal places, because the, the total of uh, an order might have uh, like cents or whatever. But if you look in the bottom left, we have quality, uh, quantity, and the quantity is an integer, and this one um, we haven't given any more information inside the, the view description, but it's still rendered differently, right? There's no commas. There's no uh, places after the decimal. We also have a few structural elements, like this notebook, that allow us to declare the structure of the view. So this notebook renders this tabbed component that you can see um, inside the view. And then we can just have some pages with some other fields that will be hidden within the, those other pages. And then the, the last thing is, at some point, we still want people to have an escape hatch. And if they need to do something that looks or feels different from what we have uh, decided to support out of the box in the framework, they still have this escape hatch, which is widgets. And at that point, they can decide to display their fields however they want. And in this case, we have this field, which is image URL. So it's just, from the, the point of view of the database, it's just a text field. Um, but we know that the, the end user wants to see the picture of the t-shirt. And so in this case, we, we've decided to render it as both the text and the image. All right. So this has nothing to do with OWL. Uh, and this has worked before we had OWL. But if we're going to use, like we, we wanted to, to switch to a modern UI library or framework, something like React. But if we're going to use them, then at some point, we need to be able to convert this kind of description of the UI into actual HTML. And it would be nice if we could do this using our UI library of choice. And so at some point, we want to compile this code to components. And this is XML. And transforming, transforming XML or HTML is easy. That's what we've always done. Uh, even in the days of jQuery, you just find nodes, you move them around, you change attributes, whatever. And then you get different XML. And so this allows us to transform this XML into other XML that OWL will be able to understand. And this is the, the actual code that's compiled when you convert this view architecture into OWL components. And obviously, we don't want to have, to have people write this by hand, which is why we have this simplified view description. So here, this is uh, a nickel titanium shape memory alloy tire that's being developed by NASA. And as you can see, it's also metal. And this is kind of. In, in my analogy, the fact that we switch from rubber to metal allows us to lean on other properties of the new material to achieve things that were otherwise impossible. All right, so we've been on in space quite a while. Uh, let's get back to Earth for a second. Is OWL actually better than React? Um, I think this is kind of the same as asking the question, is this nickel titanium alloy uh, wheel better than the standard rubber wheel. And I don't think that's the case. Like You don't want to, to take your NASA wheel on the, on the highway and commute to work with it one hour each way. It's going to get ruined pretty quickly. It's just, it just solves a completely different problem. We don't have the same constraints. Like React has been designed as an application framework, whereas OWL, uh, we want it to be an application platform. We need people to be able to modify things that are written in OWL and extend them, whereas within React, it makes perfect sense that you want to have the easiest time 
to know that nobody has touched your code from the outside and so functions completely untouchable from the outside. It's a great paradigm. It just doesn't fit our use case. There are still a few things that I think Owl does better than React. Uh, and the first one is state management. The state management for React out of the box, um, it's really, really bad. Um, I, I think at this point it's fair to say that basically React doesn't really do state management at all. It's kind of been pushed onto the community. If you want to have state management, you're always reaching for something like uh, Redux or Zustand or something that lets you do it. Whereas in OWL, it was important for us that it works out of the box and we built this great reactivity system um, on which I will be giving a, a talk tomorrow. So if you're interested about that, uh, please come, come see it. Um, and it's also a great primitive on top of which you can build more advanced state management systems. Um, so for simple applications, reactivity works great. And for complex applications like Odoo, um, the entirety of our uh, relational model that we use for form views and list views and whatever, it's built on top of this reactivity system. Uh, and it has me made it really easy to write correct code. Um, the other thing that Owl does better than React is speed. Um, React is probably fast enough in most cases, but React uses a full in-memory representation of the document object model. So it, it holds um, an object to represent every div, every attribute, and then after each render, it needs to reconcile the fact that you've rendered something different from the previous frame. And to do that, it needs to compare every node and every attribute, and then only patch the DOM with what has changed. Whereas uh, in OWL, we use uh, something called block DOM, where the granularity is no longer just the individual DOM node, but mostly the dynamic bits that might change. Because in, in most components, a lot of the, the template never changes. Right? You're rendering this bootstrap container around this uh, bootstrap row or whatever, and it never changes. It makes no sense to compare them every time you make a render. And so we, we can do a lot less work. Um, if you're interested in how this work and, uh, works and why it's so fast, you can just uh, sit right in this room for the next talk, which will be presented by my colleague Jerry, who will go in a lot of depth about um, how this works. All right. Um, thank you. So as I was saying, I with the questions. Let me open it. OK, so as a backend dev on Odoo, where should I begin to le learn OWL? Is the documentation complete enough? So I think OWL has great documentation on the wiki of the GitHub repository. Um, and also, we have tutorials in the Odoo documentation as to how to use Od uh, OWL within Odoo. And I think this is a great starting point. Uh, why not compare with Svelte, Solid View, etc.? React is already considered old by many. So I had to uh, pick one comparison point. And as I said in my intro, React is kind of the industry standard, and everybody knows it. And so um, if, I'm, if I make a compar comparison with Svelte, which many people have never even heard of, then most of my points will make no sense to most of the audience. So that's why. Um, I'm a React developer, and I'm starting with Odoo. As a junior Odoo developer, at what stage should I learn OWL? Or what should I learn before OWL? So the first rule of uh, doing any customization in JavaScript within Odoo is do it in Python instead. So I would advise you to start doing everything that you can uh, in Python. And then at the point where you want to enrich the user experience, you need something like uh, our point of sale where the, the way that the UI is laid out is very important for the, the business flow to be efficient. At that point, maybe you should look into, uh, into OWL to, make, uh, to build rich user experiences. Um, but it should really not be uh, your first approach. Um, since we now have a fully fledged UI library, are there any plans to use it along with something like Capacitor JS to recreate the smartphone app? So I have never heard of Capacitor JS. Um, I'm going to guess it's something that lets you run JavaScript on mobile devices. Uh, we have no plans to do that within Odoo, but Owl is kind of its own thing. We 
try to make sure that it's usable even outside the Odoo ecosystem. So you can probably run it uh, with something like native strip to build mobile apps if you wanted to, uh, but we don't really offer support for that. Uh, type, TypeScript supports. So OWL is written entirely in TypeScript. If you use OWL in uh, a project that's not Odoo, you can just install it as a, a node module and you will have type completions. Uh, we also uh, build uh, type declarations for OWL, and so you can use these and in, in your projects. If you're developing within Odoo, um, we have some tooling in the web framework that you can install and have uh, auto-completion and type hints and everything that you might want uh, that works very, very well with OWL. Um, why not aim towards zero hydration like Quick does? Um, so at the moment, OWL doesn't even support hydration. So uh, yeah, the reason we don't want, we don't really do hydration or have no big plans for hydration. We have some plans for some reduced version of hydration is that uh, OWL is written in JS. We don't want to rewrite and maintain the entire rendering engine in Python. And there is also no plan to rewrite the entire backend of Odoo in JavaScript. So that's kind of out of the cards. Um, can we use async and fetch commands to integrate with external systems API? OWL is just a UI library in the same way that you can use whatever you want to fetch data with, within React. Uh, you can also do the same with an within OWL. Um, all right, I think that does it for the questions. Uh, I will be available at the developer, developer per tables at the end of the hall. So if you have any more questions, feel free to come see me there and I'll be ha happy to answer any more questions. Have a good one.